Well, that, that's really interesting because I, I think you you coin something that is important. That actually people, we all have the ability to choose to feel good. A it's little bit. It's yes, within our it's within our Thank discretion. Yeah, it is within we don't have to take all the bad things that come in our life yeah. and and anchor on those things and make that the central theme of our life. No, it's an awesome point. You know, things. You know, we could well the ducks outside, right? You know, the duck, the water off the ducks back. The difficulties and the obstacles that we have in our lives, water off the duck's back, focus on what you want. You know, that's Feeling really, really good important. is all a question of focus, right. truly. It's a question of focus. And people don't like to hear that because they immediately think, what a bunch of crap. I mean, if, my, you know, if I can't pay the rent and you know, I've got some hideous autoimmune disease, I can't focus and feel good. Well, if that's what's going on for you, I mean, if you're going broke and your health is falling apart and you just got your heart broken, you are not going to feel elation in that moment not doing something horribly unnatural like doing drugs. Right. You're not going to get to elation, but you can shift your focus. The minute you stop focusing on problems and start focusing on solutions, you feel a little bit better. And it's amazing. And you really can, if you start to really care about how you feel, you can discipline yourself to continue choosing to focus in directions that feel good to you and your life will start to unfold better. And what's really remarkable about that is if you do that, you will start to deepen into yourself. You'll start to discover who I really am and what I really want, which will be paradigm changing because almost no one knows that. I mean, most of us are just, we're doing what we were programmed to do. We're chasing the careers that society and our parents told us to chase. We're not, we're not living the lives of our dreams. We're not following our dreams. Well, hearts. it's an interesting thing. It, it reminds me, when I first went to India a long time ago, I got violently sick, got dysentery in the whole nine yards. It took me about four months to recover and get to a place where I was feeling okay. And having gone through that really feeling helpless and hopeless in a very foreign and you know unbelievably different culture and circumstance, I came out the other side realizing that there's a billion people around me yeah. who really, compared to our lifestyle, most of them don't have very much to pin their happiness on, mm -hmm. yet they're incredibly happy. happy <laughs> they're yeah. very happy people, yeah. you know, riding with the chickens on the bus. And it's fascinating. When you look at global surveys of happiness, America usually ranks pretty bad. And right. countries like Nigeria, poor countries, they frequently rank far higher in happiness than we do. And people find that unlikely, and they find it maybe a little offensive, because there is something wrong with saying that their poverty is like better than our material abundance. <laughs> yeah, right, right. That's wrong, and it's yeah, weird. It is wrong. And it's actually disrespectful. <laughs> I think it's disrespectful. And it's because we don't make the connection that what makes people feel bad is a focus on what's wrong. It's a focus on lack. It's a focus on where I'm not enough, where my life isn't enough, where I'm not good enough, what's missing. And in America, in a weird way, we almost subtly train people to focus that way like it's a good thing. Like the less content and satisfied you are with who you are and where you are, the hungrier you'll be and the more you'll create. Towards what end, someone might ask? Well, towards the end of more. Right. Why? Why? <laughs> I mean, Eckhart Tolle makes the point. He says growth is great, but growth without purpose and unrestrained, that's what cancer is. Wow. That's amazing. It is an amazing that's point. Amazing. And you know, more money, great, but without purpose? What's the point? Right. The point is to get somewhere, like joy, or freedom, or deepening into our own humanity. And we don't have a culture that values these things. We really, really don't. We have a culture that constantly puts attention on where you are not enough. And I think that's why we're an unhappy culture. Where you're not thin enough. Where you don't have enough money. And like, this is a good thing. Like, oh, you should be inspired and get thinner, and get more money. And then look at the people who get that. They implode. Look at our celebrities. They get it all. And then they fall apart at the seams. Right. Because they've never dealt with what's more fundamental. And it's not that having a great body and having loads of money aren't awesome, they're awesome. It's just there are more fundamental human emotional needs that have to be fulfilled first before that stuff can arrive in our lives in a way that's deeply gratifying. Right. And we don't focus on that. Right. And you want to talk about preventing cancer, coming home to yourself, probably an awesome thing to do. I mean, my God, we know depression is a major risk factor for heart disease and cancer. Major risk. And what is depression? Depression is somewhere at the core of your being you're not letting yourself feel and experience yourself in your life a way that you want to. And rich people and beautiful people and healthy people are frequently deeply depressed. And it's because they fundamentally don't experience themselves in a way that's positive. And that, that journey is awesome. That's a gift.
give to yourself. And, and, I, and you have to care how you feel to care. Right. And I, I think the key to that, uh, and we'll end on this note, is it, the, the real key is gratitude. So a person riding a bus with their chickens in India to market, if they're experiencing gratitude for mm -hmm. having a couple of chickens to take to the market, that is the key to the happiness, mm -hmm. the, having gratitude. If you're a millionaire living in a mansion high up on a hill with no yeah. friends and no interconnection with people and you have no gratitude for the things that mm -hmm. you have, you're miserable. Yeah, and gratitude and appreciation for your life are wonderfully high states of being. In fact, I heard someone say once that true prosperity is joy in and appreciation of the moment you're in. That's, That's true it. prosperity. Also, it's a beautiful statement. Again, the devil is how do you get there? And what people don't get is that the only reason we're not there is there are very specific psychological barriers in us to experiencing ourselves that way. Specific psychological barriers that are a legacy of our the way we live our lives. Because yeah, kids are there. Right. Kids, unless you abuse them, are joyous and grateful. In, in, until they begin to get a little older and compete with one another and become not that way. Right. And it happened to all of us. And sure. We're not bad people. And it's not like we should be more grateful, although it's a nice focus. But learning to care how you feel. This is what I said when it will lead you on inner journey. When you really care about how you feel, you start to notice that there are all these ways you don't quite feel like maybe you think it's possible to feel. You don't feel that loving. You don't feel that inspired. You don't feel that grateful or that appreciative. You feel annoyed that you don't have more. You know, you don't feel connected to people. You feel mostly judgmental and standoffish. And then when you start to care and think, could I feel differently? Well, one, you did. I, unless you were abused horribly when you were three, you felt differently. And you lost that. And you lost it because you started to see yourself and life in the world in ways that were corrosive. Mm. And if you will really follow your emotions and do the work and learn how this works, you can start to come back to that. And that is the best thing you can do for your health and your life. And it's interesting. Some people experience what you could call physical miracles of healing as a part of these journeys. Right. It's very rare. But it happens. It sometimes even gets written up in the medical literature. Right. Where people who are physically a mess with various chronic diseases experience this wonderful return to health through some sort of emotional journey. And it is possible. So it's interesting that a conversation about cancer led us to this. Right. But in a way, cancer is the scariest and most horrifying thing that happens to human beings. And there's almost a natural connection because you want to talk about the most powerful forces that control our lives and ultimately impact our health. And those forces are emotional. As powerful as nutrition is, as powerful as all that is, the most powerful forces usually are emotional. And that's what most of us have no appetite for dealing with. Yeah. We just want to get back to the business of living. And that's, that's sad, but on the flip side, it's wonderful if you can commit yourself to it. So care about how you feel. <laughs> Absolutely. We'll do it. Todd, thanks. Yeah. Well, it's good, man. Uh, so should we